Right guys, welcome to episode one of Engineering Chronicles Uneducated. Well yeah, the introduction of episode one. We've filmed episode one, but we've not done an intro. Well, that's why we have it. Yeah. So they think that we're doing it beforehand. Yeah, yeah, but we're not. So, our first project for the channel, I've got a 1986 Ford Capri. That is, has gone a bit unloved for a couple of years, so... What we've done, we've gone and bought ourselves a 1999 Jaguar S-Type with a 3 litre V6. We're going to, well, we have taken the engine out, which you'll be seeing next. And the plan is to run it with twin turbos, make a squirt ECU and drop it into the Capri, giving it a new, new lease of life. Make it go like stink. Make it sound good, make it go like stink. And then, all being well, take it to the track. Um, our channel is not just about cars, it's about whatever engineering. Well, it's about whatever it's we, shenanigans yeah. that we get up to. It's what, whatever yeah. we want to do, we will do. And we'll film it and we'll put it on our channel. Good or bad. Yeah. The episodes could have got stripping the Jaguar, building the Capri. That's, yeah. we'll do, that's going to be a whole series. Um, we've got. I've done a, a really short video. On, um, way now. I've done. Gav's just going the wrong way. Just, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know where we're going right now. He's kidnapping me. <laughs> taking, taking the long road. Um. Well, what was I talking about then? So episode. So there's going to be a series about the Capri, obviously. That's the main project. But I've done a little episode about um, some LED floodlights, uh, which we're going to put on there. Uh, we're going to put an episode on there about how to make. Uh, a homemade engine test stand. That'd be coming up. A homemade racking system. Homemade racking. A homemade welding table. So we've got a lot, quite a few plans, and we're going to try and we're going to try and be informative and entertaining as best we can. And then future episodes. I fancy building a couple of drift trikes, so we can have a bit, a bit of fun with them. Yeah. Uh, you want? Maybe want a new car eventually. Yeah, I think in the, if the channel's still going in probably two years' time, I want um, an RX-8 with a, a single turbo V6 in it. That's what I like, but we'll see. We'll see. I just hope that you can hear us of the, the noise the exhaust, which is not an aftermarket exhaust, it's just a hole in the exhaust. Well, it says all in the exhaust, so I don't think there's an exhaust there in yeah. So I hope this is good footage, because um, if not, I'll be good. So whilst Gav is underneath the car on doing the second downpipe, taking his time, he's had like an hour on this job now. Um, I'm just looking at the top of the engine. The plan is to take as little off as possible, um, but looking at the shape of it, we're going to have to take air conditioning condenser off, radiator out. We might leave the gearbox on, I'm undecided, we'll see. And then we're going to lift it up like an inch and then move it forwards as far as we can and then lift it up and out. The exhaust downpipes are off, I'll show you. So they're loose now, so for the fun is we're going to turn it on. Yeah, do you want to turn it on? progress we've got the radiator air conditioning and power steering cooler loose but we've still got a handful of connections that we need to get off before we can take it out one of them being the power steering fluid so we're going to empty that without spilling a lot of oil ok 
Okay, so we have dropped the radiator down halfway, disconnected all of the hoses, all the electrics. We had a bit of a nightmare with the power steering cooler. Oil went everywhere, but we're good now. So we'll just drop it out right quick. In my room now. Look at that anti roll bar. Massive. You want to keep that and put it on the free? Yeah. Like a racing roll bar. Anti roll bar. Next job work through and disconnect the pipes, but not all the pipes, just the pipes that go to the chassis and any wires that go to the chassis. Um, and then I want to lift out the engine. No messing about. Right, guys, so we're making a little bit of progress. There's quite a mammoth amount of wires and hoses, more than I first thought. So we've taken off this bottom panel with the intention of taking out all this plastic because underneath here, there's the main loom, uh, main wiring loom for the engine, and there's a plastic connector under there. And I want to unplug it, because I want the wiring loom to stay on the engine. So I'm gonna rip all this out. Yeah. When you can't undo a nut, just snap it. That's <laughs> what so you do. <laughs> Getting somewhere now, so that's off. Not paying the ass that well. That was on the inside. How on earth would you undo that if it's on the inside? It was on the inside of the, the duct. Do you have to. How, how would you have literally got to that? Do you have to go from the other side? God knows. So I've got one, two, three nuts to undo, and then she's off. They are proper, if we can reuse those, that'd be ace. So there's the electrical connectors, which I'm glad I found. Sure proof bulkhead, that would be. So we can disconnect those, wiring loom can start the engine. And if we can reuse those for mega square ECU, that'd be ace. Oh. I thought I'd mess them up with these connectors, which were a pain and ass to get off. Uh, Gavin's spent four hours Taking off the heat shield. Well done, Gavin. <laughs> right, guys. Gav's going to finish off this engine mount, which you can just see down there. This engine mount's off. We've got 90% of the wires and hoses are disconnected. Underneath's all done. It was absolute pain in the ass getting to the alternator and the starter motor. Um, but those wires there are off the off the start motor and alternator. Um, just get into them. They're only like nuts and bolts, but it's just bloody get into them. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going like, to lift the engine and move it forwards, and then just check for any wires and connections that we've missed. Because there will be some, but we've done 90% of them now. Right, so we've got so far, it's not been the most professional engine removal, but we've got there in the end, a bit of pushing and shoving and as makeshift uh, engine hoists, which are far from perfect. But we're there now. We're just saying then that probably when it's in the Capri, we're going to fabricate and bolt on some proper engine mounts so that this job becomes a lot easier. There probably is some prevention out somewhere, but we've just done it like this. And we've probably put a little bit of pressure on in like manifold, but nah, I'm sure I'll be fine. And there we go, it's the engine bay.
No. No, I think that'll be fine, really, to save a, save a bit of money. We're back again. So the car's back up in the air. We're going to strip off the front bumper and start to pull out as much wiring as we can. There's some wiring that goes across here, and we're guessing we're going to need it for the engine to run. Um, Gav's going to look at finding the ECU, I think. Is yep. that right? Um, we've got, we didn't show you it, but we've moved the engine into the van, fits nicely. Uh, we might just fasten it to rear axle and have a rear engine van. No, maybe not. calling it a day now we've um, done a bit more front end we cannot get this off to save us lives so maybe someone can comment how the hell this front bash plate comes off we have no idea um, wiring loom we're getting there but what's really annoying is that the wires go up under the wheel latch down that side of the car they also come right across here, up under the wheel latch and down that side of the car, and I can't seem to find um, any like plugs. So it looks like it's just one continuous loom, which I don't understand how it can be. How can they fit it if it's one continuous loom? But anyway, we'll get there. Have a good tie it up now, and then later on this week we'll uh, crack back on. All this is junk. We made a mess up floor, so I'm in trouble. Tidy block tools. They're going on eBay for to sell. And then this is going over to our workshop um, to be put on the stand, which you'll see in another video. A little homemade stand. Alright, Jerry and Chronicles signing off.